do you guys think? What do you guys think of the new ride? Like it? Do not like it? I wish. I wish it was my ride. It's a rental. Uh, I booked this thing using the service Turo, it's called. Used, using Turo for the first time. This video is not sponsored by Turo. It is quite, quite blue, is it not? I mean, look at this thing. This thing is a beast. It's been pretty fun. Uh, hello from Redondo Beach and uh, long time no see. <laughs> A couple months or so, I think. Uh, WSOP came and went. It happened, finally. 2021 WSOP, the live version happened. It's the longest break in between WSOPs ever. I just made that stat up, but it seems right. No major life-changing scores. You guys would have heard from me by now if that were the case. We had a couple deep runs, three of them in fact into the money three times, played approximately eight buy-ins worth of tournaments. So obviously three caches out of that number of buy-ins, pretty happy with it. Uh, one semi-major disappointment. Came into day two of the $600 Pot Limit Omaha event, kind of as a short stack, but managed to turn my several hundred thousand into 1.8 or 9 million or so and uh, found myself looking down at pocket aces with about 30 players left in the tournament. Raise it up under the gun, there's a call on my left, big blind repots it. Most of his stack is already in there, so it's a very straightforward hand. We go ahead and repot. Guy on my left, thinks for a long time, eventually sticks the chips in, and the guy on my right in the big blind is committed, and he sticks the chips in as well, so a th massive three-way all-in pot. Yeah, Give me king, one king, king queens. King's there, there. Oh yeah. my god. King's full. Wow. He got your cover, baby. Oh, wow. 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 So that was kind of a devastating uh, situation, devastating hand, of course, and uh, a heartbreaker. That hand, had I won it, would have given me like a top two chip stack with 30 players left and uh, uh, a lot of players that were non-professional in that uh, field still remaining. So that's the way tournaments go. Uh, that's essentially my World Series. A couple of uh, similar situations with pocket aces. Busted out of the main event with pocket aces versus ace king in a five bet pot, but you guys aren't here for the, uh, the bad beat stories, or are you? A couple of reasons for the uh, two month or so whatever hiatus that we took here on the channel. First one, just mainly wanted to focus on the poker during the WSOP. Uh, there's a lot of people, you know, making content from the same locations in the same city, same tournaments often. Uh, so, I don't know, I, sometimes I wonder how necessary uh, the videos are when that's the case, you know, when everyone's... Also, I just want to like, you know, try and maximize the, uh, the poker play. Again, I don't know if that's, you know, there's always going to be times where I second guess decisions like that since, again, no major life changing scores. I did get some good experience playing a game like 5, 10, 25 PLO, which is about the biggest that I've ever played during the series. Played that a handful of times. Again, no major scores to report. Swingy game, but maybe somewhere along those same lines is uh, me getting in my own head about content creation. Um, maybe, you know, maybe somewhat similar to writer's block kind of a thing, but uh, there's going to be a lot of times when as a content creator and as the years go on, we are now five years into this uh, vlog project, by the way, um, there's going to be a lot of times where you start questioning, you know, the necessity of it, the urgency of it, but uh, I am definitely not looking to, uh, you know, end the channel or uh, lose the... Uh, the opportunity that I think uh, is in front of me with this YouTube channel and the opportunity of getting to, you know, connect with people all over the world has been like by far one of my favorite things about clicking the record button and uh, clicking the upload button. So, uh, you know, there's definitely going to be breaks from time to time. I think that's healthy. I don't know if two month break is, uh, is necessary all that often, but uh, just things. I think I'll talk more about this going forward, but uh, you know, I think for today, 
let's take this giant blue Jeep over to the Hustler Casino and find ourselves a poker game. Last time we stepped into the Hustler Casino Arena, we found a lot of success in the 5-5 streets. That combined with the fact that they don't use annoying, slippery plastic chips like they do at some of the other LA card rooms has me feeling well within my comfort zone. I sit down with $1,000 and after a little while suggest that we get the party started with a bomb pot. I get dealt ace-10 off suit and we go nine ways to a flop that comes pretty dry but with an ace. Action checks to me and I fire out. Clearly we had the best hand as everyone else lets their hands go. Brilliant suggestion on my part. All right, it was a great idea. Just on time. In this next hand, we once again find an ace 10, but this time it's the suited variety. There's a $10 straddle on and a player who's been splashing around a bit in the early going and he makes it $30 to go. I'm happy to take this one to the streets multi-way, and that's what happens when we see three other callers behind me. Five ways to a very favorable flop of ace, 10, three with two diamonds. The initial raiser continuation bets for $60, and with all these other players in the hand, we wanna charge them in case they hold one of the draws that are available. I make it $175 to go. Action folds back to the initial raiser who isn't too deep and decides to stick all of his $5 yellow chips into the middle. We're happy to call it off here and I let him know about my hand. To my surprise though, we're essentially drawing dead here. My opponent shows us pocket aces. <laughs> That's good. Good hand. Definitely did not see that one coming. Does that make the vlog? Shortly after that, David, one of the casino managers here at Hustler, treats us all to some champagne. Or maybe he's working with the Aces guy and is celebrating that setup. Hmm. Nah, I think he's just happy to see the meetup game turn out. Anyway, after a champagne cheers, we look down at King 8 of Hearts and get in the mix with it. The flop looks like a great one again, coming king high with two hearts. The initial raiser bets 55, which I'm happy to call, but there's a player behind who's happy to raise. He makes it $220 to go. The initial raiser folds and we can't go anywhere, so I call. The turn is a brick, and after I check, my opponent jams for about $500. On the surface, it looks like such an amazing flop, but we can't really beat any value hands here. On top of that, if my opponent flopped two pair or a set or a straight, then we're likely just drawing only to a flush. I get the sense that my opponent isn't the reckless type, and if that's true, then it's likely correct that we don't have as many outs as we might in other pair plus flush draw spots. I let it go here. Moving into a new table and finding a pocket pair in the small blind, there's a raise to $25, which I'm happy to call. We go three ways to an all diamond flop that gives us middle set. Definitely not in a folding mood at this point and looking to get some money into the pot, but unfortunately the action checks through. The turn is a relatively safe eight of clubs and I lead for 30 bucks. The button calls and we go heads up to a river which comes the jack of clubs. I'm looking to squeeze some value out of a top pair hand or maybe even a pocket pair below the ace. So I make a small bet of $40. My opponent takes a pretty unexpected line and raises to $120. We're never folding, and I think a three bet on this street could be a bit of an overplay since we lose to flushes, straights, pocket eights, and pocket jacks. So that leaves call as the most sensible option. I can beat ace jack. Oh, you can. <laughs> wow. In this hand, the straddle is on again, and there's a raise out of the cutoff to 35. 
We look at ace queen offsuit in the blinds and flatting and re-raising seems reasonable. Being out of position versus a late position raise makes me want to take the aggressive line. So I make it $140 to go. He makes the call and we go heads up to a flop of eight deuce deuce rainbow. Super dry flops make good candidates for a down bet. So I bet $90. He is undeterred and calls. The turn is a good one, not for our hand strength, but definitely for our range. While he could float the down bet on the flop with some king queen, king jack, king 10 combos, especially with backdoor flush draws. If he's doing that, he'll have plenty of other hands we can put in some tough spots. And we're likely the only one that can have ace king here. So I bet 180 bucks. My opponent thinks for a little while and eventually comes to the same conclusion as we were hoping and lets it go. As we move to a new table, we found a premium in the first few hands and with a straddle on, I make it $35 to go. The button three bets to $120, which we're very happy to see. These lay position battles are prime spots to wake up with the goods here since we often won't get the full credit. I four bet to $300. My opponent wants to see the first three cards at least and makes the call. The flop is kind of interesting, 10, nine, eight rainbow. We have around $900 behind to play for, which is about 1.5 times the pot. There's definitely some bad cards that would make it tough for us on later streets. A six, seven, 10, jack, queen, or ace are all at least a little sketchy. That's 23 cards. My thinking at the time is that a hand like queens or jacks aren't gonna find a fold for any price, while a hand like ace king probably won't continue for any price either. We can also charge the full amount versus the odd ace jack or ace queen hand that has decent equity while avoiding making mistakes on later streets. I decide on a route that feels the most simple and just rip the full stack. All in. My opponent doesn't do anything for a while, so I think I'm generally happy with my play. Eventually, he decides on a fold and we're gonna drag it in. I don't think my play is for sure the right one, and I'm definitely open to other thoughts, but winning 60 big blinds is a reasonably good result. Time for another bomb plot, this time of the double board variety, and we again find two face cards, but unfortunately they don't match. However, they definitely match on one of the boards, as it comes queen jack high. We have air on the second board, but at least we have over pair draws, if that's a thing. Action checks to me and I bet the full pot looking to fold out anyone who has equity on the other board while almost always having the best hand on the top board. Folding is the opposite of what happens, however. There's a call on my left before a player in early position ships all in. It's tough to have both of these boards locked up, so I'm gonna call it off and look to get at least half. Turns out, we basically stand no chance in this one as the early position player shows us pocket queens. This is the second time I flopped top two pair and ran into top set today. Making matters worse is this time my opponent has us covered. So we're losing the maximum. Couldn't get the ball. Uh, that guy. Okay. Uh, well, we just chop his money, right? That's it. Well, yeah, because we I cover, you cover. Yeah, we just yeah, chop. We just chop this. Things have been swingy in this meetup game, and there's only one table left for me to visit to try and mend the damage. Straddle is on in this hand, and action folds to me on the button, looking at 10-9 off suit. I raised 35 and only the straddler defends. Heads up to King Jack seven rainbow, which is pretty sexy because it's high card heavy and good for my range. And also gives us good equity with a double gutter. He checks and I bet $40. And after a little thought, he slides out a call. On the turn, as Nick Shulman might say, it slides right in. The queen of diamonds giving us a straight. It's not the nuts, but close enough. He checks and I'm gonna bet big here since this card adds connectivity to the board and therefore can also add connectivity to his hand after he continues on the flop. I bet that sounds kind of smart. 
I uh, wrote it so I would uh, sound kind of smart. So here I bet $130. My opponent thinks for a bit again, but this time he declares. Hold on. Again, we're losing to one potential hand, but one potential hand only. I had the second nuts. You got it then. Technically, my opponent has to show down first since he's the last aggressor, but the only time I hold people to that rule is when I'm battling against another reg. In a meetup game, I just show it down when I think I have the winner. The straddle is on pretty consistently at this final table, and it's a fun one. It's on once again here, and action folds over to me in the small blind, looking at 40% of a royal flush. I make it 40 and the straddler calls. Heads up to King Jack 10, giving us 60% of a royal flush and a gutter and bottom pair. I check and action checks through. The turn is the king of spades, and now we have 80% of a royal flush. I'm not sure how many worse combos will call us, but we can certainly call facing a bet. So I check and my opponent pounces on what probably looks like some perceived weakness. He bets $70 and we have an easy call. The river? is not 100% of a royal flush, but it is a full house. Continuing to play in flow, I check again, and my opponent bets again. 170. Easy call. Can't pull the full house, can I? Can we? Hmm. You're good. Three, four, five, okay. And now we gotta wait to orbit. So if you're bucking again, we'll play the, the double more bomb on, okay? Straddle on again, one hand later, and this time the cutoff brings it in for 35. I have queen 10 offsuit on the button, which isn't the prettiest of hands, but we do have position, so I toss the chips in. Clearly, this is the table of favorable boards because we make trips on queen, queen eight. My opponent checks, and I don't see any need to play it deceptively since I can have draws or an eight or an underpair or who knows, whatever the fuck. I bet 40-ish, and after a little thought, he calls. The turn is a brick looking six, and when my opponent checks, once again, it's an easy bet with my trips. Here, I make it 90. After he confirms how much it is, the cutoff calls again. Rivers the Ace of Diamonds, which at this point, I don't know if it should kill my action or connect with his hand, but it turns out that my opponent decides he's going to do the betting for us and leads out for $150. Not sure what to make of it. Maybe he can have Ace High Hearts and lead for value. Maybe a sticky Ace King. Sometimes people play really good hands like boats in unexpected ways, so anything is possible. I just toss in the 150 and take it a showdown, and my opponent shows us King Jack of Diamonds for the double reverse float followed by a river bluff. So we definitely didn't miss any value on the river, I don't think. We get a quick look at a super premium hand when we find pocket kings in late position. We raise and see bet the flop, but find no further action in this one. But it doesn't take too long before things get spicy again. With the straddle on, we call a raise in position with the king jack off suit, taking it heads up to a flop, which comes down king jack 10. My opponent bets $45 and I decide on a flat call. Turn fills us up right away. So just in case we had to worry about flop straights, we are even safer now. This time my opponent checks and I don't think I need to bet too big. I make it $75. Interestingly, my opponent check raises to 220. We're losing a king's full and nothing else. And while we've run top two pair in a top set twice today already, it can't possibly happen a third time, can it? I flat call just in case my opponent is getting way out of line and because we have position heading into the river with not too much left to play for. It's a queen which puts four to a straight up, perhaps inconsequential on a paired board, or maybe not as my opponent rips his last 300 into the middle. We make the obvious call and get shown ace king of clubs for 80% of a royal, 100% of a straight, but still not a winner to the full house for team favorable. I just smoked that to scoop you and you couldn't even give me that. So uh as you guys as you guys saw things were going 
not abysmal, but uh, they definitely could have been going better in the early to mid stages of this meetup game. I'm gonna use a microphone real quick. As I was saying, things could uh, definitely have gone better in the early to mid stages of this meetup game for myself, but little to no chance they could have gone any better than uh, the final stages of this meetup game. That last table, just easy game, hand after hand, making the nuts, the second nuts, monsters left and right. So uh, definitely in the end, things work out for myself uh, after the, uh, the early to mid stages of getting tortured. Um, get into this game for $2,500 and cash out of this game for 3,480, I think, 86, 3,486. Profit of $986. We got uh, more action to come from tomorrow, but I don't know if I'm gonna put it in this vlog, probably not. So it seems like there was a bunch of hands that we, that we chatted about. Um, probably just gonna wrap it up here. Probably gonna go and hang out with uh, all these friendly folks that are chilling in the upstairs bar at the Hustler Casino, have some Modelos with lime in it, and uh, chat about uh, all the run good that I enjoyed at the end of the night. Um, definitely more vlogs to come. Probably not a two month hiatus after this one. Probably gonna be a video sooner than that. Thanks for watching. Would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. Cheers.